Hey, I am excited to introduce to you Travis and Emily Weeks. I have known them for 24 years. These kids had zeal for the Lord at an early age. And I wanna publicly tell them right now, Travis and Emily, I, I love you and I am so deeply grateful for you. Now they're in Ethiopia. They're working in this partnership where they've already started 150 churches. They're working on six new church plants right now. They're digging wells in communities, providing people who have desperate physical needs, providing for the desperate spiritual needs in those communities. It's amazing what they're doing. In 2009, I was working in a church in Ohio when I met the Shizangas for the first time. And from that moment on, my heart began to swell for Zimbabwe. You know, Denford has not only been a missionary from afar, but he's become a very dear friend to me and my family. Through our faith promise efforts here at Compassion, I've seen how the Lord has used an extremely ordinary, talented man to begin to transform a nation through child sponsorship, through feeding programs, through the clean water initiatives that by your faith promise dollars have built wells. And I've also seen community gardens come to life that has ultimately led to community transformation and life change. This is what it's about. This is why we're on the planet, to advance the gospel, to provide for desperate spiritual need and desperate physical need in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you please welcome our missionary partners? All right, all right. Man, man, man. Hey, I wanna just say hello to everybody once again. Welcome to our annual Faith Promise celebration. You know, every year we take a couple weeks off and we talk about how we are actually obeying the last command the Lord Jesus gave his followers after his death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 28, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. That means he is not just resident on our, in our world, he is the ruler of our world, and you don't have to believe that if you don't want to. You can reject that truth and, and you know, take your chances. But he said, if you do believe that I am the ruler of the world, I have all authority, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, friends, that is not just leadership rhetoric. Those are actually the marching orders that Jesus gave everybody who follows him. And if you're brand new to Compassion or you just recently started joining us online, then we're so glad you're with us. But you need to know we take those words of Jesus dead seriously. Consequently, we are a church that not just sends our prayers uh, to people around the world. Man, we send our people and our money to five different continents every single day. Now, if you've been around for long, you know this. Uh, you've seen our short-term teams come up and we commission them and pray for them. Those teams are made up of people just like you. Uh, they raise their own money, uh, they take their own vacation time, and man, they go and serve with our partners domestically and internationally, and most of them are never the same again. If you've been around our church for very long, you know that over 10% of our total church income goes to others. But outside the walls of our church, in our community, and in countries around the world, where our church has the opportunity, by the grace of God, to make a difference every single day. And then every year we pass out these Faith Promise Pledge cards. We ask every child in our church and every adult in our church family to consider making a pledge on faith that God will provide it above your normal giving and then designate those dollars for our global evangelism and our local evangelism and compassion efforts. Now we just believe that every baby Christian is gonna honor Jesus by giving a tithe of their income. But we also know that Jesus wants us to have a generous heart like him and do more than is expected. And so these faith promises help us learn that no matter how generous you may be to God, you will never be able to outgive him. You will never give God more than he gives you back. Can I hear amen? amen? You know that's true, friends. Plus, we get to see the amazing ways that God has used our contributions to change the world literally for the last 50 years. Not today. Uh, you're going to see two of our missionary partners and how God is using them to make a huge difference on the continent of Africa. Now, these folks sitting up here represent two strategies that God has historically used to take light into the darkness. Uh, one of our friends here today is an indigenous missionary, Denver Chizanga and his wife Shingi, and their three children are natives of Zimbabwe. 
They grew up in that country. Uh, they found Jesus in that country. They were discipled and developed as leaders in that country. And for the last 20 years, Denford has been leading the African Development Mission, and it is having a transforming effect in Zimbabwe. And by God's grace, we've been partnering with them for the last 14 years. Now, African Development Mission is what we call a strategic partner of Compassion Christian. That means we heavily invest, not just in their evangelistic efforts, but also in community development projects like drilling freshwater wells and micro enterprise projects like community gardens where people can grow stuff and work and take responsibility for their own family and, and feed their family and make an income that they can give you know, and bless. And maybe we can get uh, Denver to talk about that a little bit. Oh, yeah. Maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, this year, because of your generous faith promises, we were able to make a really significant investment in a leadership development center that I know he will talk about and friends, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be amazing to see what God does through it. However, when we called Denver to say, look, we've got a significant financial gift we want to send you, he told us, Cam, we're just about to press pause on that project because of a lack of funds, and we know we, did, we want to be responsible financially, so we're getting ready to stop that, and then here you call and say that Compassion Christian is sending a significant financial gift. Wow. It's almost like God in heaven was working through a church an ocean away to keep the fuel and keep the funding going for that vital kingdom project. Anybody want to say amen? amen? In addition to that, yeah, thank God, man. It's awesome, 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 awesome. In addition, we've launched uh, three churches in Zimbabwe through that ministry this year. Unfortunately, Denford's wife, Shingi, was not able to be here with us today because let me tell you, she's a lot better looking than he is, bro. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> But Shingi is awesome. She's in our church all the time because she's working on a PhD program over here. But man, uh, she had a little trouble with immigration getting into the country. But man, we're so glad. Denford, let's, let's welcome Denford to our, our services today. Can, can we? All right, good. Now, also joining us today are Travis and Emily Weeks, who grew up here at Compassion Christian Church. And they represent the second strategy that God traditionally uses to get the gospel around the world. And that is to raise up compassion Christians who will literally leave everything that is comfortable for them and become sent missionaries from our church to another country uh, to reach another culture where they can reach and disciple and develop people in that country who will then have a cultural advantage as they begin to reach and disciple and develop others as well. This is actually what happened for Denford and Shingy. Uh, when our friend Charlie Delaney uh, left Kentucky and moved to Zimbabwe uh, and led a bunch of folks to Christ, and then his son-in-law, uh, Jeff Vines, followed behind, and, and they were just reaching and discipling and developing folks in Zimbabwe, and now Denford was one of those young men, and he's leading that ministry today. Now, what's amazing to me about Travis and Emily is they grew up here at our church, but Travis is a third-generation missionary, and his kids are fourth-gen missionaries. Travis's grandparents and parents all served the Lord in Congo, and then when he was a, a, a young man, they moved here to Savannah. Uh, we're so thankful that he got to grow up here in our church, and now Travis and Emily are back in Ethiopia. Travis's brother Aaron and his wife Morgan, who is also from our church, they're in Ethiopia serving together. They each have three kids, six kids, all compassionate Christians serving together in the nation of Ethiopia. And can I just say, that country is currently experiencing some extreme ethnic conflict. Dangerous level. Just think whatever you can think of in America, multiply it by 10, and that's what's going on in Ethiopia. So this is no small thing that they're serving the Lord in that place. Uh, to, to try to encourage them, they're part of a weekly Zoom meeting that keeps them in touch with us here in Savannah so that we can love them and pray for them and encourage them. Uh, by God's grace, we were able to bring Travis and Emily and their families back in 2020 before COVID shut down all international travel. But friends, for the last eight years, the Weeks family has been living in Africa, reaching, developing, discipling leaders that they hope will multiply their efforts. And if they ever have to leave that country permanently, they will leave behind strong, trained, equipped leaders who will carry on the kingdom work without them. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to work their way out of a job. You know what's true of everybody who ever works their way out of a job? They will never be out of a job. Can I hear amen? Because that's the kind of person everybody's looking for, right? So let's welcome our own son and daughter of compassion, Travis and Emily Weeks. Thank you for coming to share with us here today. Man, we love you guys. Love you, love you, love you. All right? Okay, Denford. Tell us, tell us what's really exciting to you about your work in Zimbabwe right now. What are you excited about? 
Well, so the background to our ministry as Africa Development Mission Trust is mainly in rural areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are areas where there's uh, a lot of poverty, right. uh, areas where there's a lot of underdevelopment. Yep. And over the years of our ministry, you know, we have gone into community after community, village after village, planting churches, uh, training uh, community leaders, training ministry leaders in churches, uh, partnering with the communities yeah. you know, to bring clean water, uh, partner with communities to send children to school, bring medical supplies. And what's exciting is after many years of investing like that, we are beginning to see what I would call a lift right, in right. the communities. Yeah. Where you actually see that lives are being changed, lives are being transformed, people are being uh, not only spiritually empowered as they come to the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. Uh, but their lives socially, economically is being transformed as they are able, you know, like through the community gardens, some of the things that we are doing, sure. you know, to grow crops for themselves, crops they can grow, uh, develop small businesses, you know, send their children to school, their grandchildren to school. So wow. there is a wow. lift in the communities, yeah. you know, that we are working with, and that is very exciting for us, you know, to be able to see and be a part of. Well, that's got to be. And yeah. I mean, Jesus said, that, you know, when he came, he came to bring life and life abundant. Abundantly, yeah. And, you know, it's kind of neat to see that happening. You know, we live with this every day in, in America mm. because it's what we call common grace. Yeah. Because Christian leaders and Christian people and Christian values have had such a profound impact on this country, everybody gets blessed because of that. Yeah. And it's really exciting to see that happening in uh, Zimbabwe yeah. as well. And then also currently we have been building um, you know, a massive training center because yeah. uh, in Zimbabwe there is high unemployment. Sure. Uh, a lot of young people you know, may go to school, get good grades, right. uh, but not be able to find a job. And what we are doing in one of the areas uh, that we are working in called Mondoro is to build this massive training center, right. uh, which is going to you know, provide training for pastors, provide training for evangelists, but also be a vocational training school, right. you know, right. where young men and women can come and learn you know, about carpentry, building, computers, right. uh, and acquire skills that they can use to create employment for themselves. Sure. You know, rather sure. than wait to be employed, but actually create employment for themselves. And this is super exciting for us. You know, as you see, um, this is, you know, in the middle of uh, some village in Zimbabwe, and people wonder why build such a big, beautiful facility. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's part of our vision and part of our, our goal to bring empowerment. Uh, in communities. And that's the building we were able to invest in? Exactly. Well, exactly. praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Come Thank on, you. man. That's Thank fantastic. You. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good. Yeah. All right, brother. Okay, uh, Travis, what are you excited about uh, with your ministry in Ethiopia? Yeah, it's, um, it's such a, it feels like a privilege yeah. to be able to come here, be in Ethiopia, serving there, but to be able to come back and forth and share stories about what we see God doing through his sure. church in Ethiopia yeah. um, with folks back here because we get to be on some of the front lines stuff mm -hmm. that the kingdom of God is doing. You know, we, uh, Aaron and I run a training center right. in, in Ethiopia where we call in leaders from mm -hmm. various local churches, established local churches, leaders who have a heart for ministry and have integrity but maybe haven't had access to very much training theological training or even education in so general. So these are really bright people who yeah. just haven't had access to education. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so with this training center, we're able to call them in and we do biblical training, theological training. Oh, we do great, man. practical ministry yeah. stuff, children's yeah. ministry, youth ministry, all kinds of stuff, sure. pastoral counseling. So we call guys into, into this training center and we equip them and send them back out to serve in their, <clears throat> in their local churches. Wow. So that's one of the things we're able to do. But then also... With our uh, involvement with, you know, we work with about 160 local mm -hmm. churches. With our involvement in each of these local churches, we're able to identify some uh, leaders who have a real heart for church planting and a real passion for reaching the lost. Yeah. And so with those guys, we're able to do some additional training, and then we go with them and plant churches, right. share the gospel, and plant churches in 
totally unreached regions in Ethiopia. Wow. Yeah. You know, we just finished a series of messages that we call Another Gospel. Because in America, there's this bifurcation between a commitment to biblical theology and then just kind of whatever pandering to the culture looks like. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful that you guys are in Ethiopia training up these church leaders and training up these church planters to, yeah. you know, honor the scriptural uh, values and then spread it where it's never been heard of before, which is amazing. Yeah. And thank God. Uh, Emily, now you've got, you guys have got three little kids, second grader, yep. kindergartner. Yep. And then Hurricane Jude, yeah. right? Three yeah. years old, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, you, you went to Ethiopia with a 10-week-old baby. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So how does, how does this work, man? How are you guys making this work? I mean, you both have Bible college education. Right. You've both been to seminary. You both you feel called to the ministry. How's, how's this working for you? Yeah. So um, I, we, we see our ministry as a team. Right. So um, when Travis is traveling and he's out there... Um, working with the church yeah. and making disciples. Um, I, I'm staying home and I'm making sure everybody gets fed, educated, and I'm also making disciples in our own family. Amen, amen. So that's my role in this season of life with little kids in Ethiopia. Um, but I'm really excited about the fact that we get to give our kids this gift of yeah. Friendship with Ethiopians. Um, they they make friends that they love, and um, they also receive a lot of love from yeah. folks over there. And I think that's a real gift. So wow. Okay. Anybody thankful for a godly woman discipling three kids at the house in <laughs> Ethiopia? Awesome. Wow. And you know what? This is such a pivotal part of your ministry because if 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 that were not happening, there's no moral authority in the ministry. I mean, if, if we're not. If, if the Ethiopian people cannot see in your home what you're trying to teach in the church and everywhere else, then it just doesn't have any authority at all. So thank you. Thank you for making that amazing yeah. contribution. Okay, uh, Emily, talk to us, if you will, about one way that, um, uh, well, all right, hold, hold that thought. Sure. Hold that thought. Denver, mm -hmm. life change in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Can you tell us any stories about how lives have been changing in Zimbabwe? Uh, two quick stories. You know, one is, like I mentioned, part of our ministry is sponsoring young uh, people to go to school. Right. And, you know, we have, now we are at a stage where we are beginning to see some of these young people whom we have been working with from primary school, secondary school, uh, and have gone to university. Right. And recently, you know, we had one of our first uh, university graduates, you know, who had been in wow. our child sponsorship program. Wow. And wow. Uh, he's now working with us. Uh, and one of the things that he said, which really touched me, was he said, you know, when I look at my life, looking back, uh, when I had finished my A-level education, it looked like no one from within my family or my circle of friends was going to be able to help me move forward. And when the mission came into his life, provided the sponsorship, he says, not only have you affected my life, but you've affected the life or influenced the life of my family, the life of my community, you know, wow. at large. Wow. And, you know, that was very touching for us to be able man, to I see yeah. life being transformed to that level. Another story is another man, you know, that we have uh, worked with. Again, one of the things that we do is not only to work with communities at large, but sometimes individuals where we provide some startup income, mm -hmm. you know, for them to start a small business. Yeah. And this man and his family started a small chicken business, raising chickens and yeah. selling them. Uh, initially, just selling a few chickens, uh, began to sell hundreds and hundreds of chicken. Is this Chick-fil-A in Zimbabwe? Chick-fil-A I mean, in Zimbabwe, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was able to, you know, buy a car for himself. Uh, come on. You know, able wow. to you know, send his children, send his grandchildren, oh, uh, you know, awesome. to school. And yeah. you can just see the empowerment in his life. Right. You know, and right. he said something to us which was also very touching. He said, you know, now I feel like my dignity has been restored. Amen. Wow. You know, Praise where, the Lord, man. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. If you gave him an opportunity, he seized it, worked hard, yeah. managed that opportunity, yeah. and God just And that's the blessed. exciting thing that... You know, in a lot of situations, you know, sometimes it's resources that we may feel uh, just a few dollars. Right. You know, right. but they open somebody's life, yeah. oh, you know, and provide such a great opportunity to transform their life and their community. Mm -hmm. 
So, it's powerful. You know, the book of Revelation says that God, you know, Jesus can open doors no man can shut. Mm. And it looks like that's what happened. That's exactly. what's happening, man. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right, Travis, how about you? Any life change stories from Ethiopia? Yeah. So, we, we have seen firsthand how the gospel changes things. We right. see it on the individual people, on individual people's level, on the level of individuals and in communities. Yeah. We, we are friends with a guy named Mujahid. He's mm -hmm. a, one of the guys who, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So Mujahid, uh, as a young man, grew up in a rural village. He was, he's a sharp kid. Yeah. Um, one of the few kids from his village who had a chance to go to, to college. Right. And first semester, went off to college, was there a couple weeks, and then something just happened in his mind. Something happened, hmm. and he fell into like a deep depression wow. or something like that. We wow. don't exactly know right. what it was, but that's the way his family describes it. It kind of sounds like that. And he was unable to go to class, unable to get out of bed. He couldn't finish the semester at school. His family had to go, wow. pick him up, bring him home. And at home, he just laid in bed for weeks. And nothing his father could do and nothing his dad could do or his family could do changed it. Um, his dad, you know, this is a Muslim family in a Muslim village way out right. in, a rural, in rural Ethiopia. So his dad went to their local imam, the Muslim leader, and he said, come and pray for my son. He needs help. The imam came and prayed. Nothing happened. Right. So then the, the dad's next step was to go to the local diviner, kind of a witch doctor guy. Right. Uh, the witch doctor came and did his thing. Nothing happened. Wow. So then weeks after that, the father was in uh, a town nearby, kind of a county seat, doing yeah. some trading, and he saw a church. Hmm. And he said, this is one of the churches we're partnered with. I've, uh, yeah. I've done a lot of training with the, with the pastor in that church. And he said, let's try Christianity. You know, he's rolling the dice. <laughs> Got nothing to lose, he didn't, right? Yeah, he didn't yeah. have, you know, nothing to lose at, the, at that point. So walked into the church, found a pastor there, and said, hey, my son is sick. Will you pray for him? The pastor said, yeah, absolutely. So walked two hours up the mountain to this guy's wow. village wow. and prayed for uh, our friend Mujahid. And that moment, Mujahid got up out of bed. His strength was restored. His like mental clarity was restored. Come on. It's like he was revived, yeah. Wow, and wow. That, almost like he's healed or something. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> that, that moment was so compelling for, for Mujahid, for his family, and for other people in the village yeah that his family immediately, they accepted the gospel. Wow. His father wow. said to uh, our pastor friend, his father said, what do we need to do to bring a church here to this place? Wow. So his father wow. that day donated land and they, his family together built the first uh, little building that they worshiped in, a little grass house, and they worshiped there for months. And the people in the village, they knew Mujahid's story and they saw the transformation in his life and so it was compelling for them also. And that church has grown over the last year and a half, and now they've outgrown their first building, and they've <laughs> themselves oh. built their second sanctuary. Oh, praise the there. Lord, man. That's awesome, 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 awesome. So, man, I'm telling you, I read a story like that in a book one time. Let me think who wrote it. Uh, it was the New Testament, yeah. And, uh, but, I mean, so often Jesus would go into a situation with compassion, and there would be a miraculous healing or feeding or something like that. People's hearts would open up. Mm -hmm. in, a, in a community where there's no testimony of the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't always have every one of my prayers answered in a dr dramatic way, mm -hmm. but I don't live in a community where there's no testimony of the gospel either. Right. And so, man, it's just amazing to get to see God do stuff like yeah. that. This kid, Mujahid, he just came through our training center. Wow. And now he's back in his village, and he is a full-time pastor there. <laughs> Praise yeah. the Lord, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Man. Awesome. So, fantastic. So we see, we see you know, transformation on an in individual uh, level like this, but yeah. then we also see it sort of village-wide in some places. You know, we've been talking about some of the conflict in Ethiopia. Yeah. There are a bunch of different ethnic groups, and we are partnered with a lot of believers among a region called Oromia, mm -hmm. and, we're, and we work with a bunch of churches in another area called Gumus. Uh, the Gumus and the Oromo, their neighbors, they're, these are ethnic groups and they're neighbors with one another, but for generations they have not gotten along. Wow. There's a lot of fighting along the border between the two regions. And a lot of times, you know, some folks will cross the border and go burn down houses or kill people or steal animals. And then, they're, you know, without, you know, almost without exception, then, you know, the other side will retaliate, do right. the same thing. And it just, right. it's been going back and forth for generations. Wow. Um, these two groups, they live at different elevations, and so they farm different things. Yeah. And the two groups still like to eat what the other farms. So right. they're, 
they do trade. When mm-hmm. times are kind of cooled off, they trade back and forth. So about a year, a year and a half ago, there was a time where some Oromo folks were down in the lowlands in a Gumus village and fighting broke out. And all these Gumus folks were attacking the Or- Oromo people in the village. The, so the Oromo people were genuinely fearing for their lives. Wow. Um, and they were <clears throat> fleeing. They were just running. They didn't know where to go. They found refuge in the local church that we're partnered with there. So they ran into the local church, and then the Gumus believers in that area, they stood around the church and stopped their neighbors Come from on. coming in to continue the fight. Come on. Hmm. Wow. So the gospel transformed that culture of hate yeah. to the point that the Romo people protected their historic enemies from their own people yeah. because of the gospel. Yeah, you know, the work is not finished yet, but we see that among the believers, yeah. they're light years ahead of their of the unbelieving counterparts. Wow, yeah. praise the Lord. Let's thank God for that, Con. Yeah. Oh, man, awesome, awesome. Now, Emily, do you have a life change story to share with us? Nothing that Nothing that will compare to Okay. <laughs> Emily, could you talk to us about how the support of our church affects you and your work in Ethiopia? Yeah, um, so many ways. There are so many ways. Um, there's a small group in Richmond Hill where um, we've been connected with them for um, maybe the whole time we've been in Ethiopia. Wow, about. yeah. Um, and they are... They've kind of taken us under their wing. They send us um, packages with like American goodies and they think about our kids when we're uh, about to take a long flight and they'll send us like little activity books for them to do on the planes. Yeah. And, wow. Um, they, when we are in, a, in a, the States, um, they always invite us to join them and we find uh, their small group to be like a family for us. Wow. Um, And then when we've been, um, when we came back from our first term, that was our first four years in um, Ethiopia, we came back to America for a little break (laughs) and it was, we just realized we were so depleted emotionally and spiritually. And the global outreach team here, um, they they saw that and they came alongside us and um, they, they initiated a group where we could get together with other missionaries and um, some of the people here on staff where we could uh, gather around some scripture and uh, just have some community to support one another and um, study the word together. And that group has continued for the last three years when we've been in Ethiopia. We're on uh, Zoom every wow. week. Wow. Before Zoom was popular, you yeah. know? <laughs> you probably made it popular. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, so we've been so grateful for that because it's provided us with community and a place where we're uh, someone is uh, pouring into us and right. we aren't just pouring right. out. So, You so. said something I thought was so significant. You know, here you guys are serving the Lord, but you found yourself depleted. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, when you're tired, you can take a vacation mm-hmm. and rest up and, and you'll be good. But when you're depleted, you've got to be refilled. Yeah. Rest doesn't help. Mm-hmm. You've got to actually be refilled. And, and so the church provided you a way to, to spiritually and emotionally kind of recharge along yeah. with everything else. And man, we're so glad. Yeah. So glad we're able to do that, man. Fantastic. How about you, Travis? Uh, how's uh, the yeah. support of the church? What has it meant to you? You know, we just wouldn't be in Ethiopia doing this work right. were it not for churches like Compassion right. Right. that help us go, help us stay there. We, um, you know, we do a bunch of different things. We do these training, you know, the training center, church planning stuff. We're also involved with digging wells, and mm-hmm. all of those things require financial resources yep. to get them started and keep them right. and to keep them running. And we just couldn't do it without churches like Compassion helping helping us get the work done. Wow, wow! You know, it's so you know we give because we love Jesus, right? But it's so neat to hear that man things are happening a continent, you know, ocean away yeah. because of those gifts, man. And we're glad to invest in somebody like y'all. Love you guys. How about you, Denver? What is the support of the church meant to you? Well, one of the things that we have really appreciated uh, about Compassion is, you know, we are not just people that you send some money or a right. check to, right. uh, but you have worked very hard to develop our relationship, you mm-hmm. know, whereby we actually feel we have family here. Yeah. Uh, and that's just a huge encouragement to us, and especially when 
you know, people from this church, members from this church come over to Zimbabwe yeah. and we walk together in the fields and work together. Uh, it is a huge encouragement, you know, to, to no us no. No, uh, no. and That's to know good. that you are praying for us constantly. You know, we pray for ourselves, but, you know, there are times when sometimes things happen and you realize, I didn't pray for this. <laughs> You know, and <laughs> yeah. you know somebody yeah. somewhere was somebody praying for was you. Praying. That's right. Uh, yeah. And that's a huge encouragement. And wow. the, the financial gifts, the financial support, I like to describe it as, you know, fuel being added to the fire. Right. You right. know, because right. there is so much that we have been able to do because of the financial support of compassion. I mean, one of the things that I shared about is the wells that we go around and we drill and you know, as of last month, we had drilled 87 wells. 87. 87 wells <laughs> in the different communities. Um, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Awesome. And awesome. Awesome. That's huge dollars. And that's expensive. It's very expensive. I mean, expensive. there are thousands of dollars to drill one yeah, of those wells, but right? It brings such a huge difference in people's lives. I mean, you should see when we bring a drilling rig, oh, yeah. you know, into a community, just the anticipation, yeah. you know, that yeah. the people will have. I mean, this process of drilling a well may take four hours or so, but yeah. as soon as we bring the drilling, you will see the whole community come, yeah. and they just wait in anticipation. Oh, that's you know, awesome, And man. you should see when we hit the water, you know, <laughs> the way people celebrate and dance and sing. Oh, uh, you, can tell, you can tell a huge difference you know, is being made in their lives. Well, listen, the first know. time I went to Zimbabwe, Women were carrying water in five-gallon buckets yeah. a mile or two from a, a river that looked like a Savannah River, but you wouldn't want to be making iced tea out of that. And uh, I mean, having to t yeah. carry this stuff, 35-pound buckets mm. you know, of water, two or three miles back home, boil the water so it will be usable, mm. all of that stuff by hand. Yeah. And now when those, drill, when those wells pop up in those villages, and it's clean, fresh water for the first time ever in many yeah. of those villages. Uh, and they can use it for drinking and cooking and irrigating and all that stuff. Yeah. And that's pretty amazing. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, we're glad to be a part of that. Thank glad you very support, much. Man. Yep. Thank you very right, much. Bye, bye. Okay. <laughs> all right, Denford, tell us. Well, let me start down here. Travis? No, let's start down here. Emily? <laughs> <laughs> What is your vision for the future, and how can we pray for you? I'll let Travis answer that one. <laughs> okay, you're gonna, I'm going to defer to the gentleman from uh, Tanzania. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So Cam asked you. All right, right, so, you know, in Ethiopia. Now she's going to want us to pray about her husband, so you better That's just go right. ahead. So That's she what you wants to say. go last week. <laughs> so in Ethiopia, everything we do is in partnership with, with national leaders, national believers. Yep. And we think that's the right strategy. Sure. And we spend a lot of time talking about vision, strategy, goals, yeah. and how to develop the mission that we're doing. Sure. Um, and our, our overall goal is to get to a point where we really can pack our bags and go home yeah. and leave the work in the capable hands of courageous, faithful people like Denford who are serving in Ethiopia. And sometimes that happens because of the kind of civil strife yeah. And, you know, it's not like you just want to go home. Right. You have to go. Yeah. But to be able to leave behind trained people. Yes. Men who are discipled and developed and, and ready to lead, that's a, that's a noble vision. How can, we, how can we pray for that? Pray that, that God helps uh, the leaders we work with mm -hmm. keep his kingdom front and center. Yeah. Not our own reputations, not the name, you know, the name of the church that we represent, but just... God and his gospel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll pray about that one. Okay, Emily, how about you? How can we pray for yeah. Ethiopia? Um, I'd say pray for peace. That's yeah. what we're praying for. Um, it sounds kind of abstract to say pray for peace. Right. But it is um, really personal, too, and it matters a lot to uh, our ability to move around and do the ministry that we're doing in Ethiopia. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it also just impacts um, the people in our churches' lives on, you know, on a daily basis. No doubt, so. no doubt. Yeah. You know, just the ability to travel gets stopped mm -hmm. by conflict, and you, it makes it very difficult to do what you're doing. All right, mm -hmm. we'll continue to pray for that. Yeah. We sure will. Okay, how about you, Denford? Tell us, what's your vision for the future, and how can we pray for you? 
So our vision uh, basically is when we look back, we feel God has um, used us to develop a model of ministry yeah. where we go into a community, uh, bring the good news of Jesus Christ by planting a church, follow that up by training community leaders, training ministry leaders in churches, partner with the community to bring clean water, you know, health, education. Uh, and right now we are operating in four of Zimbabwe's 10 provinces, like yeah. states. Yeah. Uh, and our vision is to take this model, you know, to all the 10 provinces in Zimbabwe uh, and also to take it beyond, you know, the Zimbabwean borders. We currently have some churches in Zambia, and, you know, beginning next year, we are going to go big in terms of the community development work right. uh, in the northern part of Zambia called Kasama. Uh -huh. uh, we want to take that model to Zambia. We have one church in Mozambique, and our vision, again, is to take the same model, uh, obviously change it depending with the country and, right. you know, the different aspects of the culture there, uh, but basically take that model to Mozambique as well. Uh, and so our prayer, you know, or what we ask for in prayer, you know, is that, you know, you would pray that we would remain aligned yes. to what God wants yes. done yes. Uh, as we go into the different uh, provinces, different countries. Uh, pray also, you know, that we uh, would see the spiritual harvest. You know, that's the ultimate goal. Yes, it's good that we are drilling wells, feeding people, bringing education, but the ultimate goal is that people would come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we have seen that happen in all the communities that we are going, but that people would come to the Lord Jesus Christ, that people would go to heaven. That's our ultimate goal. Amen, so amen, amen. We can pray for that, brother. Man, okay. Aren't you thankful for these folks, y'all? Come on. Let's thank God. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Love you guys. So, when you grab this card and you start praying about, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to give above my normal giving to Faith Promise? These are the kinds of people you're supporting on five continents around the world. And you know what? You could buy a truck or a cup of coffee with that money, and 50 years from now, it would mean nothing. But let me tell you, 50 years from now, there'll be a lot of people in Ethiopia and in Zimbabwe in heaven because of your faith promise. And I just think it's worth praying about. Amen? Amen. It's worth it. Let's pray about it right now. Let's pray right now. Father, we're so thankful that we can come to the end of this service and know in our heart that we are supporting noble men and women on continents that many of us will never visit. Lord, they are leading people to Christ, many of whom we will not meet until we get to heaven. But Father, we're so thankful for the investment that you have enabled us to make as followers of Jesus, Lord, good stewards of all the resources you've given us. Father, thank you for this vision of taking the gospel, not just outside of our church walls here in our region, but Lord, to our state and our nation and then other nations and everywhere in the world, exactly as Jesus commanded, that we would go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit and then teaching them all, Lord, that you have taught us. And I just pray, God, that you bless our church. In these next couple of weeks, we will decide how much it means to us to send the gospel around the world. And I pray, oh God, it will mean the same thing to us that it meant to you when you sent your son to save us. And we pray this in the strong name of Jesus and all God's people said... Amen.